After we've tone mapped the image, we can now move to the color matching. And this is an actual post processing. So within the histogram, we can also click the RGB buttons here and you can see now we get a more detailed looks on the information from our images. And here in the rendering, you can see we have more of the blue and green color in the darker tones than in the original image. Um, this is something a little bit different to the Luma preview here. You don't always have to try matching those curves to these ones because as I said already, uh, the most important thing is the overall look of our rendering. But now let's get into the color post-processing. The first step I usually do in Blender directly is matching the tones of the elements. So for example, adjusting the color of the wooden elements to what we have in the rendering. I'm gonna quickly go to the full screen here, press Shift A and choose the uh, hue correct. By the way, you can see we have many color nodes here, but I'm just gonna, I usually go very simple, so I just do hue correction, uh, color balance, and sometimes color correction. So let's start with the hue correction. I'm gonna drop this node here, so it joins the link. I'm gonna exit the full screen and zoom into the node itself. So you can see we have those points uh, along the graph and they represent the certain color hues. As you can see here, we can change the hue of this color uh, range, saturation of this color range and its value. Uh, practically, it looks more or less like this. Let's say I want to adjust my wooden part, as I mentioned, and I want to change its hue. So I just press the H I can hear and move the graph up and down. And you can see this change only affects the red orange kind of colors from the spectrum. So everything else stays untouched. Let me zoom in back to the wooden elements. Uh, I advise checking the color adjustments on a, cer uh, on a few parts of the wooden elements because they look different in different part of the image. Um, yeah, so I think we could add a little bit of this yellowy tone to it. Um, I think we could also add a little bit of brightness. So let's switch to the value here and move this handle up. As you can see, the material becomes brighter. Let's now go to this side maybe and compare it. Yeah, I think more or less we are getting there. Perhaps we can reduce the saturation slightly. Um, you will also see that in the Photoshop post-production video that all of those changes are very delicate. I'm trying to avoid very drastic moves like that. So again, let's get back to this element and see what happens if we decrease the saturation slightly. Let's go back to the hues. Yeah, and I think with those few little steps, we actually have a pretty nice looking wooden material. If we use the FAC slider here, this works as an opacity slider. So you can see we are able to, to totally disable the effect of that node and you can see an instant preview here. That's why it's important to use the viewer node here because it looks a little bit slower if we use the composite. I prefer using the viewer here and here as well. So let's maybe use the opacity of point, point 0.8 and yeah, I would say that's it for the wooden material. The other uh, distinguishable color within our picture is this greenery behind the window. So let's maybe try adjusting it as well. Because as you can see here, it's a little bit more, more yellowy. So again, I'm having the hue selected here. You can sometimes try moving this graph up and down drastically just to see if you're affecting the right color shade. So 
yeah I would say let's maybe try something like this something like this the changes here are very very delicate perhaps I will go with this more of this green tone to be honest I think it looks more natural yeah so now we can also change the saturation maybe increase it slightly just within the green elements and let's also adjust the value maybe reduce it slightly like this and add it here yeah so more or less this is the first step the color the hue correction now what I would like to set up is something that I already mentioned so you can see within the those gray areas uh, we need a little bit of this greeny bluish tint to be added and I'm gonna use a color balance node for that so again shift a color and color balance this is how this node looks like and you might be tempted to <laughs> Uh, play around with all of those color wheels. I mean, I suggest doing that just to get around this note and see how it works. But practically what I do is just using this one here. And again, if I have a nicely tone mapped and in general, nicely matched image, like in our course, the changes you're gonna apply here will be very, very small. So as you can see, I'm gonna just try to shift this point towards this greeny bluish area as the tint we have here. If I click here already, you can see it's way too much. So that has to be much more delicate, maybe something like this. I think we already have a little bit too much of the color within the concrete. Let's zoom out. Yeah, I think, especially if you compare the metal material, it's already a little bit too much. So let's maybe reduce it to here. And yeah, again, I would probably reduce the overall opacity slightly, but more or less, you can already see those images start matching pretty nicely. Um, still, I think we could do something about the ceiling maybe so let's try to shift this point a little bit here maybe yeah as you can also see this is a pretty intuitive thing so as when we were setting up the histograms for light matching uh, it was a little bit more mathematical just by setting up the values here but the curves and those color wheels this is more intuitive so uh, you just need to practice a little bit, try matching the colors a few times, and you should get pretty good at it. Again, I'm just gonna click here. But I think that's enough. Sometimes you might also go back, as I think we could do with our wooden element. It became a little bit more yellowy after applying the color correction and that's not a problem at all so we just switch back to hues here and move this point slightly downwards so it adds this reddish tint to the wooden elements uh, one of the final adjustments will be using the color correction node when i plug it in here you can see it has many settings uh, but they are fairly simple as you can see our uh, rendering is a little bit more saturated than the original image so what's cool about this note we can desaturate the tones depending on the amount of light they have for for example we can only desaturate the highlights this way which is usually recommended for um, the most photorealistic look that's a little tip from me and now we can try to play around with the midtones for example so let's set the midtone saturation to 75 and we can go down with shadows so you can see uh, the shadow settings influence our scene the most let's maybe stick to 0.85 percent here um, you can also see this is it's possible to use those settings for uh, just a one or a few of the color channels. We are not gonna do that here 
since it's not necessary, but I'm just letting you know you can do this. Um, you can also change the general contrast of the image using this node, but don't use the contrast settings because um, they are pretty outdated and they generate those ugly uh, clamped out images. So what I suggest using if you want to change the contrast of your picture is just sticking to the gamma settings. The lower you go, the bigger the contrast. So let's maybe use the value of 0.95, very slight adjustment. And yeah, more or less, perhaps uh, we could also play around a little bit with the settings here, maybe in uh, increasing the highlights just a little bit. Let's uh, actually, there's not that much of a change to be honest here. Um, let's see the midtones. Yeah, perhaps we can increase the midtones just a little bit. Um, but Overall, I think I'm pretty happy with the result. I'm still not that happy maybe with the wood uh, <laughs> color. So I'm just getting back to it over and over again, as you can see. But yeah, this is the part of the process as well. Sometimes you just have to do it um, and adjust things as long as you need to for the right result. Uh, the final node I would be using is a pretty basic filter uh, and it's just the soften uh, filter but I change it to sharpen and yeah you can see the default look is very unrealistic so I decrease it to a very small number uh, point 0.1 is way too much because you can see this ugly anti-aliasing being visible. Actually, to be honest, if you want to apply sharpening to your image, I would suggest saving this output to a JPEG or a PNG and doing that in Photoshop directly. I think this gives you much better results. I'm still actually readjusting the, those settings here, to be honest. I think we desaturated the image too much. Um, but yeah, let's now compare the histograms again. And still you can see we weren't quite able to remove this bluish peak within the darker tones. Uh, but our image looks pretty good, I must say. So I'm just going to show you how you can examine those kind of uh, things within the histogram just to double check if everything is okay within your picture. I'm just going to copy the image node here and open our reference. And you can directly compare the color channels uh, within the compositor. So let's go to the converter, separate RGBA, where A is for alpha. Um, we are plugging in the image input. It just takes a few seconds to reload. Now let's duplicate the viewer node and let's use the B output here as an input. So this way we can see how the blue color channel looks for this image. If we click, yeah, it takes, as I said, a few seconds to reload and now we can see. Um, so this basically, you can see also the histogram updated here because we use the viewer node, the one we select within the compositor. Um, so you can see we have, okay, some dark tones here, which are represented by this part of the histogram, a lot of bright tones, which are represented here, and some middle tones here and there spread across this part of the histogram. Now let's do the same for our image. So I'm going to copy the note, the separate RGBA note, and try to plug it in here if Blender allows me to. By default, it plugs in the red channel, but let's plug in the blue channel. So this is our result. I'm just going to move those two viewers here. Sorry for the update. Yeah, let's let's do this setup so we can switch between those viewers quickly. So you can see our render input actually 
is a little bit different here. We have a much darker in, uh, input for the blue channel of our rendering. Uh, we have way less reflections here and on the floor. And I guess that's the reason we have this huge peak of the bluish tint uh, within this area. Let's switch back to that image again. So yeah, you can see we have way less dark tones here around the floor, around those areas, much more reflections being visible in the blue channel. That's the reason we have almost no of the uh, values here within the histogram in our rendering again much more darker tones so that's why this looks differently so actually the reason we have this different um, different histogram looks for the blue channel is not that we did something wrong it's just because we have a little bit different render result um, those graphs look differently so I would say that concludes the post-production process in Blender. You can still take this output image, this final image we have created, uh, bring it to Photoshop and do some final adjustments. As I said, you can do the sharpening in Photoshop. I think it looks better. Uh, you can do vignetting and all those uh, kind of visual post-production effects. But as for the tone mapping, as for the color correction, I think uh, Blender also allows us uh, getting this pretty nice looking results. So if we compare the images directly, I think you can see uh, they are pretty, pretty nicely matched if we look at them in detail. So yeah, thank you for watching and I hope you've learned something new today. Thank you guys for watching. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which you can watch for free on YouTube. All the necessary details and link to the full playlist can be found in the video description. If you want to support what I do and access all of the 3D files used in this course, plus Blender ready interior setups and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, just visit the Chocofur store and learn more about our subscription plans. Again, thanks for watching and I see you soon.